Hello and welcome everyone. This is Type V3 with a review of the metal build ARX8 Lavatane, the successor to the Arbalest and Full Metal Panic's final hero arm slave. This is the definitive version of the Lavatane. It's simply stunning. So many beautiful and intricate details have been strewn throughout the figure. The sculpting is sharp with clear and deep panel breaks emphasizing the layering of the armor. Having flashes of metal peek out between the armor pieces is also a nice touch. But of course, the most prominent visual quality is the fact that the entire toy has been painted. Every surface carries an evenly distributed and crisp matte finish, which is then highlighted by small markings to give the Lavatane a realistic vibe. Speaking of which, the general design of this metal build takes on a real-world theme as opposed to the slightly stylized artwork seen in the series. Of course, the differences as a whole are minimal. If anything, this ARX-8 just seems a tad stockier all around. For a 1 48th scale toy, the Lavatane stands at a respectable 7.5 inches tall, putting it on level terms with a standard Master Grade Gundam kit. The similarities don't end there either because the metal content is distributed throughout this figure in a familiar manner to an MG's plastic inner frame. The entire core is completely die cast, with the outer panels being plastic. That said, the metal skeleton in this figure is a lot thicker than the inner frame in your average MG Gundam. Additionally, some of the armor panels are die cast too. The result is a deceptively heavy toy. The Lavatane can also be displayed in its Lambda Driver activated state, and thankfully, it's generally achieved through the use of built-in features. The shoulders each open up revealing gold mechanical detailing, the inner knees can be pressed in to uncover cooling vents on the opposite sides, and finally, the top of the head hinges open to expose a peg hole. This is meant for plugging in the translucent cooling fiber effect part. The changes altogether are minimal, still I appreciate how there was no part swapping. Again, the Lavatane is a beautiful figure that's practically devoid of issue. For articulation, the Lavatane has a ball jointed neck that has a second joint right at the base that can go up, so he can do some pretty great stuff. There's no real limitations here. Uh, the In terms of the, the cooling fibers, because it's on a peg, this can just swivel wherever you want. This is just a soft plastic material, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue for anything. The torso itself has an independent section here for the armor, and then there is a swivel. There's a little bit of tilting going on. You can tell the tilt is actually right happening at this joint. And then for forward and back uh, torso crunch, the whole thing can actually extend upwards, and this lets you go all the way down and back pretty far. For the shoulders, you're looking at a swivel here, and it's on a swing out peg so that you can kick it forward. The actual shoulder pad themselves are on independent little hinges. The arm can extend outwards. You have a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and the wrists are on a ball hinge. So it takes a little bit more work than a ball joint, but you can still get the same amount of range of articulation that you would hope for. Hips are on your standard universal joint connection. However, range is only 45 degrees forward and out to the side. You can though, click both of the hips down and then this little die cast piece extends and now forward range is about 90 degrees. Unfortunately, uh, the outward kick is still about 45. There is a built-in thigh swivel. You can get the legs to come back a little bit just because there is this movable armor plate here. There is a double jointed knee and the knee armor can extend forward. The ankles have independent ankle armor. There's two hinges, one at the top, one at the bottom, so you can get forward and back movement is okay. There's ankle rockers, although I wish they did have a bit more extended range. And for the toe joint, you have two. You have one that goes down and the tip goes forward, which can provide some usefulness, although I haven't really found it to be that useful. One of the biggest downsides of increasing a toy size is the hindrance it puts on articulation and adding huge die cast chunks only makes the situation worse. Simply put, this combination isn't a big fan of gravity. That said, the Lavatane's original design was always based on high mobility, making the placement for joints smart and effective. It's not going to outshine a proper action figure, though the amount of dynamic poses this metal build can achieve are impressive nonetheless. As you've probably already noticed, the Lavatane comes with a basic pair of fists. These can be swapped out for a pair of open palms via a straight peg connection. Next, there's a pair of gripping hands whose sole purpose is meant for holding the included pair of grenades. They look okay. One negative is that you can't store these anywhere on the figure. Next up are the angled clasp hands to be used for all of the figure's melee weapons. There's a basic pair of anti-tank daggers that have a nice cold finish on the blade. They're okay, yet these two have no storage options. The real star is the pair of monomolecular cutters. They're larger and a bit more distinct. These unfold and you have to swap out a filler piece with the blade before the figure can actually wield them. 
or you can fold them back up and keep them stored behind the knee pads, blades hidden or exposed. There's plenty of display options between these four knives. The last pair of hands are the trigger finger ones for obvious use with all of the Lavatane's firearms. The smoothbore cannon is up first. It's only half painted, yet it still looks very nice. You can cock the gun, there's a working stock, and a removable magazine. In fact, there's two magazines, so you can double stack them to your liking. The ARX-8 has no issues wielding the gun, though I wish there was a proper clasped hand for holding the barrel. There's two options for storage. You can either replace the backside panel of the figure with a clip that the gun then latches into, or you can easily use the magazines to peg onto the legs of the toy. The other included gun is the Lavatane's largest weapon, the Demolition Howitzer. Much like the shotgun, it's only half painted and features a removable double magazine. Both arms are required to support the gun's weight. However, there's a third arm hidden within the figure's torso, and it can be exposed to allow for an even more secure setup. It does require swapping out the installed arm piece for one with a working claw, and getting everything to align can be tricky too, but the final display is completely worth it. The Demolition Howitzer's features don't stop there though, as the front half can detach completely and leave you with a large rifle that's much easier for the figure to wield. For storage, the entire gun folds in half and the peg arm attaches to either of the Lavatane's shoulders. Another weapon at the ARX-8's disposal are the two wire guns. These are exactly what you'd expect, posable wires with functioning claws on the end. To attach them, open up the compartments on the figure's forearms to reveal the guns and then plug in the wires. It's a neat feature. The metal build Lavatane even comes with the Fairy's Feather System upgrade parts. Their presentation is in line with the high standard set by the base figure. Switching out the shoulder pads are easy, as they're held in by a single C-clip. The ends of the Fairy wings can swivel, and the tops and bottoms extend to activate the Fairy's Feather System. You also get a new clip for the demolition howitzer so that the gun can be stored directly on top of the shoulders. It's a well thought out upgrade overall. For some smaller accessories, two static character figures are included. They are the pilot Sosuke and the arm slave mechanic Sax. They come on plastic runners and require assembly. I'm very disappointed that they weren't painted, especially considering that every other item in this package contains meticulous detail. Two other extras are the cockpit seats, one with and one without Sosuke. These are for use with the Lavatane's opening cockpit. The head folds forwards, the chest extends outwards, and the back plate lifts up to reveal the insides. Details are fairly sparse. You can place either cockpit seat inside, and as a thoughtful bonus, a pair of plastic tweezers are included to help remove the pieces. It's a smart extra that I'd like to see carried forward in more releases. The Lavatane's last inclusion is arguably the best one of them all, since it doubles as both a display base and an accessory hanger. It's molded in a cool gray plastic with bold white markings. There's a metal rod for display support, and yes, Every single item can be stored on this base. It's not quite as magnificent as the base shown in the prototype photos, but still makes for one prominent display setup. Finally, as a first edition bonus, this figure comes in full illustration limited packaging. As someone who despises full art boxes, I found this to be a forgettable first run bonus and would have rather seen this artwork included as a separate print. Since its inception, the Metal Build line has been very well received by collectors and has set a high standard for similar products. So when Bandai announced that the line would no longer be exclusive to Gundam, and that the first example of this new direction would involve Full Metal Panic's Lavatane, I was extremely excited. Sure, the $170 price tag, and my personal fanboyism, had me worried that the figure could never reach the expectations I set for it in my head, but you know what? It completely did, and I couldn't be more thrilled. For a figure that was designed as a higher-end display piece, I found that the Metal Build Lavatane functioned almost better as a feature-rich toy. The smooth, moving parts, the built-in gimmicks, and the abundance of accessories give way for a multiple amount of play options. What's more, because part swapping is minimal and the extra pieces are intuitive to use, at no point did the figure feel like a frustrating or tedious experience. On top of that, everything is stored neatly on the display base. No need for messing around with storage trays or bags. It's a toy that encourages you to play with it. Now the Lavatane is all but perfect, and unfortunately, it carries its share of flaws too. I do wish articulation could have been improved in the legs, and I'll admit I'm saddened that none of the pilot figures were painted. Also, the toy is surprisingly small for the expensive price, though there is an argument that the metal content makes up for it. Still, these are minor complaints on what is almost a near-perfect rendition of the ARX-8. Ultimately, the Metal Build Lavatane is a release worth experiencing regardless if you're a Full Metal Panic fan or not. 
It may not be the most visually striking piece the line has seen, and it may not even be the most feature-rich. However, its ability to capture both aspects of a high-end collectible and the simple fun of an action figure in a single fluid experience is what makes the metal build ARX-8 Lavatane one of the best toy releases to date. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see more arm slaves infiltrate the metal build line. After all, the Arbalest is the mecha that Full Metal Panic fans are mostly familiar with.